I had lots of small scraps of wood piling up in the workshop, so I wanted to use them to make something. I hadn't used my bandsaw too much since buying it, so I thought it'd be good to make a bandsaw box. I'd never made anything like that before, so I thought it'd be fun to try. I had a 3 inch thick piece of pine, some thin strips of oak that were offcuts from a kitchen worktop, and a long piece of hardwood that I think may be teak that I found in the street that looked like it might have been from a bed frame but I'm not sure. I chopped a few lengths of the teak on the mitre saw to roughly the same length as the piece of pine. Then I ripped it on the table saw to square off each side. Then I spread a generous amount of wood glue to the pieces and clamped them together. I decided to use the pine block in the middle and the teak at the front and the back. When the glue had dried, I removed the clamps. And then trimmed off the sides and the ends on the table saw. Some of the glue joints were not perfect, so I applied some glue to the gaps and rubbed in some sawdust. Once the glue had dried, I used a cabinet scraper to get rid of the excess glue. Then I ran the block through the jointer to clean up the sides. then sanded on the belt sander. The first thing I wanted to do on the bandsaw was to cut off the rear panel of the box. I set up a fence about 10mm from the blade and slowly pushed the piece through. This did not go well as the bandsaw blade kept drifting off to one side and I couldn't get a straight cut. So I did a bit of research about blade drift. Matthias Wendell's video, which I'll link to in the description below, explained why this was occurring. I won't go into too much detail as his video explains it better than I ever could, but I figured that the blade on my bandsaw had too many teeth per inch and the fact that it was quite old and not very sharp certainly wasn't helping. So I decided to buy a new 3 tooth per inch blade which I bought for about £12 on the internet. I'd never fitted a bandsaw blade before but I found a couple of good YouTube videos about how to do it. So I slipped the new blade onto the wheels, tensioned the blade, adjusted the tracking so that the blade ran in the centre of the wheels, and then set up the blade guides and bearings so that they were almost touching the blade. And finally, I used a small set square to get the table square to the blade. Then I ran through a test piece of wood, an offcut from the bandsaw box, and the blade cut perfectly straight, so that was the first problem solved. The next problem to tackle was what to do about the wonky cut that I'd made with the old blade. I thought about starting again with some more scraps of wood, but then I figured I could cut a curve on the bandsaw at the top of the carcass and make the bad cut more of a design feature than an accident. So then I used a pencil to mark a curve, cut the curve on the bandsaw,
and use the belt sander to round it off. So the wonky cut that I'd made on what was going to be the back of the bandsaw box was now a sloped curve on the front of the box. So the project had evolved a little, but as it was my first attempt at making a bandsaw box, I kind of knew it was never going to come out perfect anyway. So with that done, I set up the fence again and cut off the new rear panel on the bandsaw and this time the cut was really good and straight. Then I cut the side panels off in the same way. So with the rear and side panels cut, I marked up the cuts I'd need to make to create three drawers. Then I made those cuts. For some reason the blade started to drift again at this point. I don't know how or why but rather than get hung up on it I decided to just not use the fence anymore and to just carefully push the wood through at a slight angle to counteract the drift which works fine. I applied glue to the drawer separators and the top and bottom and clamped the sides to them with the drawers in place so that they would be in the right position. Then I eased off the clamps so I could remove the drawers being careful not to move the position of the drawer separators. Then I waited for the glue to dry. I could then trim off the overhang on the crosscut sled on my table saw and then sand the bottom of the carcass flush. Then it was time to glue the rear panel back onto the carcass. So I glued that on and used my vise to clamp it and I slotted in a wedge of wood cut on the table saw to compensate for the curved front so that the pressure would be evenly applied. With the carcass assembled, I started making the drawers. I marked up the cuts with a pencil and first cut the drawer fronts. Then I cut the bottom panel of the drawers. And then with the block that was left, I cut out the centre, which created the sides and back of the drawers.
Then I glued and clamped the drawers back together. I wanted to make trims for the top of each drawer to hold the drawer in snugly and I decided to use the oak offcuts for this. I tilted my table saw blade to about 7 degrees and cut a thin strip. marked up the length and then cut them on the bandsaw to size. And glued and clamped with spring clamps. With the drawer trims cut, I decided I could make drawer handles from the rest of the thin piece that was left over. I cut three strips to a length of five centimetres on the bandsaw and then shaped them on the belt sander. To attach the handles, I used a ruler to draw a cross on the front of each drawer to find the centre point. placed the handle where the lines met at the top so that each drawer handle would be positioned in the same way. And glued and clamped them to the drawer fronts. Once I'd sanded down the drawers, they fitted into the carcass. I sanded down everything on the belt sander and rounded off all corners as I didn't want any sharp edges on the box. Then I sanded everything with an orbital sander and a 240 grit paper. And then finally sanded everything down by hand with a 600 grit paper. Finally, I applied a boiled linseed oil to the carcass and the drawers. That was the box completed. It isn't perfect, there are lots of flaws, but hopefully only I will notice them because I know they are there. But for a first attempt, it doesn't look too bad, although I'm not sure if I'll make another one in a hurry.